Good morning, Antioch Church Embrace. Uh, let's pray before we begin our devotions today. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word, and we thank you as we reflect on these past few days of living life. Um, in this section of Matthew, as Jesus is preaching about the end of time. Father, we thank you that at the end of the day, you hold us in your hand if we have faith in you, if we believe in Jesus as our Savior. You will always watch over us and protect us and care for us, even at the end of days. Father, may this word today touch us and change us and spur us to action. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, today's passage is Matthew chapter 25, verses 31 to 46, and I'll read that for us. <clears throat> when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit on his glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate the people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in, or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? The king will reply, Truly I tell you, Whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you who are cursed, into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not invite me in. I needed clothes, and you did not clothe me. I was sick and in prison, and you did not look after me. They also will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or needing clothes or sick or in prison and did not help you? He will reply, truly, I tell you, whatever you did not do for one of the least of these, you did not do for me. Then they will go away to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. So if you look at uh, Matthew chapter 25, you know, uh, all right. I think it goes further back to Jesus at the time is really talking a lot about the end of time and I guess uh, judgment day uh, when he will return, when God will return and, um, and everyone will be judged. Um, so here we have, again have another story, another parable about what's going to happen. Um, and the first thing I think is clear is that the Son of Man will clearly divide people into two groups. The sheep and the goats. Uh, another way you could look at how he splits them up is those who cared for the least of people and those who did not care for the least of people. Those who obeyed God, I guess, and those who did not obey God. Uh, one thing I thought was interesting in verse 34, when God is speaking to the sheep, to those who um, cared for the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, as, G as God says, um, that in verse 34, uh, God says, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. So it's interesting to note, I think, that uh, God has been preparing our home for us even since the creation of the world. Um, that God clearly has a home for us prepared. So now let's look at what the sheep and the goats did and, and what the difference is. Um, so the sheep, they fed the hungry, they gave the thirsty something to drink, they invited the strangers in, they gave clothes to those who did not have clothes, 
and they looked after the sick and those who were in prison. And interestingly, the sheep did not know who it was or the things that they did that qualify for this. And God says that you, whenever you did it for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. So I think it's important for us to think about who are the least, who are these people in our lives. And the question for us is, are we taking care of them? And, you know, it's a question I have to ask myself, even right now, as I read this passage once again. I've read it many times, but once again, it's a reminder that God calls us to care for the least of people, those who are suffering. And so the sheep will enter into heaven, they will take their inheritance, whereas the goats, they are cursed into hell. Um, so it is a kind of sobering, humbling thing to think about. Um, yeah, I, it's just a pretty simple message, I think, from this passage. It's, are we looking after the least of people? And I think that's something that we have to think about as individuals and as a church and as a congregation, that are we doing this? And if we are not, who can we look after and what can we do? And I guess that will be the challenge for us today and the thought to take away from this passage. And if someone comes to mind, then we also then need to move forward and, and be practical and do something and follow up on that that urge you may have or that sense in your heart of someone you need to reach out to. So let's spend some time praying. Father, uh, we come before you today. We know that you care, Father, for the least of people. You care for those who are oppressed. And we're thankful for that because sometimes that is us. But Lord, we pray that you would help us to see who in our lives is currently suffering. Who in our lives are you calling us to reach out to and care for. Lord, make it clear in our hearts and show us, Father, what things we can do and help us to have the courage and the conviction and the strength to follow up on these thoughts and fill us with your Holy Spirit. That would not be out of a sense of duty. It would not be out of a sense, out of, a sense of legalism, but it would purely come out of a sense of gratefulness and thankfulness to God, for your, to you, for your grace and your mercy. And it would also be, uh, it would also come from a genuine love for people that comes from you, that we would see people as you see people. Father, we lift up all these things to you. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks, everyone. Have a good day.